Hello guys, hope you are doing good. So today we are here with a new video and this time the topic of video is the tools and technologies that we generally use in our day to day life. So we are talking about Java developers. So all the tools and technologies that uh, I'll discuss that will mainly be focused on Java developers only. So let's start uh, with that. So the first and foremost thing which is the Java language if you are a Java developer. So that is, uh, we'll talk about versions now then. So which version of Java you are using? So you can uh, answer it as 8, 11, anything. But uh, do you know about the latest version that is into market? It's 19. So yeah, it should be uh, at least 8. There are few companies that are even using 7 also. But uh, I think 8 is, uh, good uh, stable version that most of the companies are using so first thing we'll note down the first tool and technology or anything that uh, java developer is using uh, that is uh, java 8 is the first and foremost thing okay java 8 the version okay second thing is uh, which tool uh, which editor you are using for uh, writing your code so there are different editors, open source also, free uh, and paid both. So mainly we are using STS, uh, which is Spring Tool Shoot, uh, Eclipse you can say, uh, and uh, then uh, IntelliJ, uh, IntelliJ IDEA is uh, uh, one mostly used. So these are the three, uh, and there are various others, BlueJ also. These are the most commonly used IDEs which you can go for any one that uh, you prefer uh, all these are almost similar they all have the same functionalities same plugins so those are that that is fine but uh, names uh, are like sts eclipse and intelligence these are the main ide that uh, java developer commonly use and then we'll talk about the web framework so mainly if you are uh, talking about java then uh, you are working on web applications you are working on microservices you are working on desktop applications so if uh, you are talking about web services then we should know web frameworks so spring mvc or spring boot are the commonly used spring uh, frameworks into market okay and uh, then uh, where do you uh, deploy your applications so you need a server as well for deploying the java applications so while coding you can create a jar or var uh, file out of your code and then you need to deploy it on the server so if you are using uh, spring boot then uh, then application server is uh, tomcat that is by default included into uh, into uh, the application that you are uh, building other servers that we if we talk about then these are weblogic jbox these are the mainly used application servers for uh, java application then we will talk about the testing frameworks so testing framework i mean uh, we we uh, write j units also uh, unit test cases for our code that we we are doing so for writing the j units we are using uh, j unit and j units so nowadays j unit 5 which is called as jupyter that is generally used and uh, when when we are writing the j units then we are not uh, making the database calls or any other writing to file or reading from file so that we don't do for that what we do is that part of code we mock it so for that purpose uh, we are using mockito and uh, there are limitations of mockito that we are not uh, able to mock uh, static methods for that we are using uh, power mock so these are two uh, things for mocking and uh, then uh, if we talk about uh, some testing uh, 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 of our java code then generally uh, selenium and uh, cucumber is uh, used in companies so that that a java developer can skip if they don't know it's fine and uh, now we will talk about that okay uh, we have uh, created our java application and we know about uh, how and where we are going to deploy it that's when you can run your application you can check your application uh, uh, what uh, whether it's behaving properly or not now uh, where you will uh, if where you will keep your code so for that we are using version control system so if they, we we have uh, three members then everybody needs to push their code pull their code uh, take the sync of all of this so we are using git for that um, 
git you can use git or hvn uh, there are two but for version control system uh, so we are using a uh, git mainly so that you can mark and uh, where that code will be that is uh, git is a versioning control system so but where the code will be so there is a separate thing for putting keeping your uh, code so that can be bitbucket that can be github that can be gitlab and uh, this git will have uh, will have sync with uh, these repositories and then your code can be anytime sync to your local system from where you can push your pull and now uh, for CICD uh, that is also uh, main thing that uh, when you are giving your code to production for the, uh, for QA for any any other process so how you are building your uh, code at that time into local we can normally build by running into our IDE but how you are uh, building it on servers so that we are doing with the help of Jenkins or you can say bamboo also bamboo is also uh, build tool but uh, yeah and you can use any any one of them so Jenkins and bamboo that you can note down so you need to integrate your application with the database also so there are various things various databases that you can use you can use oracle you can use uh, plsql you can use uh, uh, mongodb postgres mysql even you can use access for that so mongodb uh, is uh, no sql so and uh, oracle and uh, postgres these are sql dbs so that, that's it and now another point comes so if you have a database you have a java application so how you will be mapping these both so for that we are using uh, Either way, you can say persistence API or you can say some ORM. Object, uh, ORM is object relational model that will uh, map your Java objects to the database. For that, uh, we have uh, uh, JP, which is Java persistence API, or you can use Hibernate for that. Or JDBC is also uh, preferred by some company. So, and that about uh, the persistence API. Okay, so if there are multiple people that are doing the code then you might be worried about uh, code analysis also whether this code is meeting the standards or not or this syntax is fine or not if there are any vulnerabilities or not so these all things are taken care by sonar cube which is a static code analysis tool okay so let's uh, go ahead so you like every time you want to be writing code for everything correct there must be some libraries that you will use and uh, some common things so we have some libraries some jars that are ready-made available to us we can directly use them and uh, write code on top of it to meet our requirements so where that jars we can find where that dependencies which we can find so we have to build tools for that uh, we can say uh, dependency management tools for that so maven and grader that generally uh, we use you can go for any one of them as per uh, your company's requirement and your team is doing uh, either that project can be uh, maven based or grader based so you can use any any one of them also you need to uh, log uh, into your applications so that you can uh, if there is some issues you can get to know that uh, where it is failing why it is failing so for those we are using few libraries uh, somebody can uh, use log4j slf4j these are the commonly used uh, logging libraries okay so you know uh, if we are connecting uh, uh, our application with the database then uh, we need to save data we need to retrieve data so uh, how how we will be sending the request so if we are writing some rest apis so how we will be uh, uh, suppose we have written the test case uh, re re written the uh, API and then I want to uh, check whether my API is working fine or not then how will I uh, make the request to that API so for that we are using if that's a get API then we can simply directly uh, call it from our uh, browser but if it is a post request or if it is a put request or if it is a delete request then we need to uh, use some tool so we are using a postman for that so these are the main uh, tools that we are using in our day to day life and apart from these uh, other things that are used are uh, you can say Jira so what uh, what is the use of Jira so Jira is normally that if you are doing some task then 
you will have a Jira assigned to it. Most of the companies use Jira uh, tool be Atlassian. So you will have all the details mentioned in uh, Jira and uh, you have different status on it that it's in to do, it's in uh, progress, it's completed. So you will be updating your status on Jira that yeah, I'm working on this task and this task is finished or not. So uh, it's, it's normal tool. And uh, then we have another thing is AWS. So uh, you, uh, uh, you, we, we, we use lots of services by Amazon, uh, mainly for deployment, build or other uh, services that are provided. We use servers by AWS. So these things, uh, but AWS is not mandatory uh, that if you don't know, then you can't survive. It's not like that. And uh, Docker and Kubernetes is the next thing. So uh, Docker is uh, also for uh, creating builds and uh, deploying it. So Docker is actually, uh, it's a container where you can uh, uh, build your uh, uh, code and uh, keep it over there. And uh, with uh, they, there are containers into Docker where you can uh, put your uh, uh, jar files so that you can deploy it on server. Then next thing is Swagger. It is also not mandatory, but it is, uh, uh, Java tool that is used for you can say Java dependency uh, we have uh, that we can use for creating the documentation of our code. So uh, this is a good to have thing, but it's not necessary. And it's not a big thing. So next thing is Kafka. So if we are having multiple applications, multiple services, and if they need to uh, talk with each other, each other, then how they will be exchanging their messages? There are various things. There are rest. Uh, uh, REST template and uh, uh, other things also. So, uh, but Kafka is uh, one good thing, uh, which is asynchronous mode of communication between different uh, uh, microservices. So, which is uh, most popular nowadays. So, Kafka is a thing that uh, you should know, and it's good to have. And then, uh, uh, then another thing comes that uh, okay, I have configured database, but uh, my database is. Uh, 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 slow nowadays due to data or uh, heavy data or uh, it, it costs me too much so there comes that you can why you, you don't uh, save your uh, uh, you can make a one request and save all the data in uh, into your application somewhere and then that, that data you can use every time so that is called as cache so for that we are using uh, redis uh, so that's one good thing uh, that uh, that we we can use in our application that's also uh, you can say must must know thing uh, that you should know uh, cache either it can be Redis or something else but uh, yeah it's it it is something that you should know yeah that's all uh, uh, what I recall uh, there are lots of other things also that we use uh, in day to day life uh, feel free to uh, comment uh, if I miss something and uh, I'll also update uh, if I uh, recall. Yeah. Thank, thanks for watching.